Welcome to another edition of the Midas Pro Series training. Uh, today I'd like to show you how to do virtual sound check using the Clark Technic DN9650 network interface. First of all, I'm going to give you a quick little demo of, of what it feels like and how it works. Then I'll go into the details of how to set it up on the Midas end of things and then as well on the computer side of things. Uh, the software I'm using for my audio recording is Apple's Logic Pro X. Okay, so uh, I have a show here that I recorded and what Midas and, and this bridge allow me to do is to take each track individually, record it, and then using one simple switch on the console, I can switch back to my tape returns and basically do a, a virtual sound check without anybody being there uh, so I can work on an individual, individual track, um, fine tune the EQ, compressor, whatever else I need to do. All right, so let's have a listen. Uh, first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, in the preferences, make sure my tape returns are enabled, uh, both here and here. And then I'm going to load my scene, which is that one right there, Oh Holy Night. And then here on my um, DAW, I'm going to go ahead and hit play. So now that I've given you a quick demo, let's take a look at how to set it up. To accomplish this, you need to have a DN9650 network bridge, and you need to connect it to the DL371 audio system engine via at least one, depending on how many channels you're trying to do, um, CAT6 or CAT5E cable, whatever the requirement is. Uh, you need to connect that to your audio engine. The second part of what you need is the proper network interface on the other side. So one side of the network is the Midas side, which is the AES50, and the other side is going to be whatever uh, you purchase. So the card that I have, or the interface that I have, is, a, is the Dante 64, which allows me to have 64 channels of 48 um, kilohertz. If I go to 96 uh, kilohertz sampling rate, then I have half the amount of channels, so I just stuck with 48. Once you have that plugged in, what you need to do is go into the patching screen on the Midas console and go to configuration and choose the ports where you connected uh, the network bridge. So I connected with three different cables and here we are stage port 4, 5 and 6. I'm selecting a generic AAS50 device which is what it acts as and I'm I had to use different IDs. I, I can't remember if that's required or if it'll work without that. But once you have that selected what you'll get is three extra screens. The AAS50 ID 11, 12 and 13 and you'll get what is it, uh, 24 times 3, 72 inputs and 72 outputs. The truth of the matter is you can't use all of them. If I have a 64 in, 64 out 
interface, the last eight channels I can't use. So the proper way to get it set up where you will output each individual channel's audio is if you go to uh, automatic and you go to direct outputs on the left side and on the stage I.O. what you want to do is you want to select all of your outputs just like that. If you click on this first one here it'll basically do a one-to-one -one patch uh, from for example my 48 input channels to the first 48 uh, channels on the Dante input. What else is important is that what you're sending with those channels is not processed so if we go to one of my input channels say this one you can go to the direct out screen and you'll see uh, where it's being fed to here it's be this is input channel 8 for me and it's being sent out on channel 8 of the Dante interface and the little arrow here it's feeding directly after the input which is directly after the head amp gain so once I get my gain set that's the level that's the level and that's the signal that's going to be going out I'm not doing applying any processing the mutes don't affect it the fader doesn't affect it so when I'm recording my multi-track I'm recording everything not the state of everything so I have to it's important to have a, a scene that's saving uh, what your thought process was and how you had your channel set up at that time that's why I loaded my uh, my scene before I was able to demo that to you so that's my send on my returns what I need to do is go back to the patching screen and under stage IO I, I have these three AS50 boxes and what I need to do is place them into inputs okay so on the inputs um, destination side there's these little tape icons underneath e each input channel so what I would do is again select 48 and place them on the tape return side of the input not on the top part which is just the regular input on the bottom part which is the tape return then uh, if you go into preferences we need to do a couple of things first of all enable all tape returns second we need to go to user and if we hit that button all the direct outputs will be set to be pre-processing so it'll go head amp send it to your direct output which is going to be the Dante interface uh, then you want to unmute all of the direct outputs and set all the direct out gains to zero decibels because uh, this is the only way you're going to get a return when you're listening back from your DAW when you're listening to it you want to hear the same level that you were originally if you have your recordings uh, or your direct outs bumped up just a little bit they're going to come back hotter too and so your your scene isn't going to be quite the same as as it was the first time around when you were recording and then on the configuration screen here's where you choose which input you're using for the channel so if you use tape return you can notice that my head amp uh, gains are no longer there if i switch to normal all of a sudden i see visual representations of my head amp gain here on top. So that's the Midas side of it. Uh, the next thing we need to do is take a look at the configuration of the network bridge. All right, so the network bridge actually has a static IP that you have to set. Um, that's a, a whole networking question. I, I don't remember what the default is, but I've changed mine to work with my network. Here you can customize the screen on the front of the thing. Um, you can have it say whatever you want, doesn't really matter. Um, module type so here's where you choose what you've installed uh, I obviously chose Clark Technic Dante 64 uh, change module settings here's where you can change 48 or 96 kilohertz sampling rate and uh, when you make that change you cut your channels in half I wanted 64 channels so I stuck with uh, 48 kilohertz if you need high, if you need that higher sampling rate and you're doing recording recording for the purpose of recording then stick with 96 and if 32 channels is enough for you then great uh, it's not enough for me to do virtual sound check on the 48 input console uh, so here we choose the settings on the AS50 side of the network bridge 
the sample frequency on all three of those ports, all of the MIDAS system is 96. And then here you can specify an IP address and a subnet mask. Uh, one thing you should also do is update the software on the thing. That's about it on the configuration of the device. Um, you need to have the, the network bridge plugged into the control port to your network uh, in order to, um, to access the screen. It doesn't support DHCP, so it won't pick up an IP address. You probably are going to have to connect the computer directly to it, set your computer's IP manually to work on the same network as the, as the network bridge. So we'll need to download two pieces of uh, software in order for, for these things to work. So we want to go to the Audionate, Audionate uh, website. The first one is the Dante controller. The controller allows you to patch inputs from the network to inputs on the Dante Virtual Sound Card. Second piece of software is Dante Virtual Sound Card. It looks like it's only 30 bucks, which is really great considering the fact that it has so much functionality. Uh, if you count up the price of the bridge, uh, the network bridge and the Dante card and a few pieces of software like this. This is a much more cost-effective option than the ones, the other ones I've seen. Uh, so that's why I chose to go with this. The first thing I want to show you is the Dante Virtual Sound Card. Once you have it installed and licensed, just turn the thing on. Hit the green button. It'll show you that you're plugged into the network, you, what your IP is, and, and all that good stuff. Uh, what's important to know is that you should be running this on a one gigabit network connection. You cannot be using a USB to Ethernet uh, converter. Well, anyway, once you have your Dante Virtual Sound Card enabled, uh, you can go into the controller, and you will see uh, both of your devices, hopefully. Dante transmitters and Dante receivers. It's kind of like a grid, but for what we're doing, it's really not too complicated. The transmitter for us is the network bridge, and the receiver is the iMac. And all we're doing is going down the list and connecting each uh, send from the bridge to an input on the virtual sound card. So one to one, basically. Channel one, channel two, channel three. They all just match up all the way down to 48. One on my Midas console is input one on the Dante Virtual Sound Card on here. That way I don't really have to think about what's where and it's a lot simpler to set up my templates and, and, and use logic that way. I'm also recording a few buses that I have um, with just like instruments or vocals or a main mix because that kind of allows me to go back and listen to what I did the first time around and if I need to compare to maybe an improvement that I've made because of virtual sound check. So that's going to be the inputs on the virtual sound card. If we want to do the returns or the uh, outputs from the virtual sound card, which is what we're going to be using to playback, we want to do iMac recording for the transmitter and DN9650 96, bridge for the receiver and we're going to repeat the same exact thing, patch one to one. So output one on the virtual sound card is going to be uh, one on the bridge and then coming back as one. I try to keep it simple by using the same numbering throughout the whole chain. That way we don't get any confusion and you know it's a lot easier to take a look at the screen and be like okay yeah my patching is correct. So once we have that set up uh, we open Logic Pro. We'll start a new project. We'll go empty project and audio input Dante virtual sound card output also Dante virtual sound card. The next step is you want to create all of your tracks and you only want to do this once because it's kind of a headache to go back and uh, recreate those. So we want an audio, we want 48 tracks. For your input you want to make sure you check ascending and you select input one. For your output also check ascending, go to output, go all the way down to mono and choose output one. Uh, we can enable recording, uh, we can turn off input monitoring, we should still see the levels as they're coming in and we want to make sure we create 48 tracks we hit create and all of a sudden here we go we have 48 tracks uh, coming in and if we look closely audio 8 is a microphone that I actually have out there on right now it's a pulpit mic and it's getting a little bit of signal so I know that it's working 
Here's a couple of details that kind of tripped me up when I just set this up. Uh, the levels. Um, the level you see on the meter on the Midas console is not the level you'll see on Logic. What I was told by some Midas reps is that once you've hit the last, uh, the last little bit of LED, which says plus 21, you still have six more decibels of headroom. So when I'm setting up my gain structure, I usually try not to hit the red too often. It, obviously, it's okay if it does every once in a while. But when you hit the red, you still have six more decibels. And what that basically ends up being is that a lot of your recording levels are going to be low. Or at least they're going to look low on here. When you do the playback, it's going to come back just as hot as it was when it was going out. Um, which in, in most cases when you're doing virtual sound check is exactly what you want. But if you're recording and you want to get the hottest signal possible, well then you're probably going to have to mess with some of the settings on the direct output. You might want to boost that just a little bit and you're obviously introducing noise there. You, I don't know what's going to be more noisy if you boost the audio already in the DAW or if you boost the audio on the direct output, but know that you can expect um, significantly lower levels when you're viewing the signal in the DAW compared to what you're seeing on the meters on the Midas console. This is really useful stuff. I was able to spend about 20-30 minutes with some of my band members, get a recording specifically with the drums. I, I recorded about 20 minutes of the drummer playing the drums. Then I sat here with my headphones, I, I detailed every compressor and gate and EQ on each uh, mic played it out there and it, it really cleaned things up uh, once you have a chance to go back and listen to these things in detail and it really improves your your life performance once you can save these settings so if you guys have comments or questions go ahead and leave them down below I'd love to explain or answer any additional questions you may have about the Midas Pro 3 so that's it for now uh, and I'll catch you next time